you will be taxed. Please, for the love of God, set aside money for taxes because nothing is worse than making a lot of money in your business and then getting a 12 or 15 or $20,000 tax bill and having already spent all of that money. Hi everyone, it is Tina with Picture It Profit and Financials where I help consultants, coaches, and professionals get their money life in order. Today I wanna to talk about sinking funds. I have addressed this topic in the past and I have done so speaking specifically about personal finances. Sinking funds is a concept that I learned from Dave Ramsey. It is the idea of sinking or setting aside money every month or every pay period for an expense or a bill that you know is coming but has an irregular nature. So it's not something you pay every month, hence it's not part of your monthly budget, but you know it's coming and you wanna be prepared for it. On the personal side, this for me includes things like vacation and half cow, because yes, my family loves beef that much. <laughs> but it's also things like back to school shopping and insurance payments, things like this. And I am now seeing as I work with people in their businesses more and more, that this same concept should be employed for your business. And so today I wanna to talk about six sinking funds that you should have for your business. Now, you guys know I'm an advocate for Profit First. I love Profit First. I have some videos where I overview what the Profit First system is. And if you are using Profit First, then you are already doing a form of sinking funds in your business. This would be for the Profit account and the tax savings account. Now, I, I love the profit account because it's a way for you to invest in your business and pay bonuses, um, but I think that we could get even more granular than that because the more granular you are, the more vivid your vision for the future is, the more likely it is that you are going to have that successful result that you're looking for. So the absolute most foundational sinking fund that you have to have is the tax savings account. As a matter of fact, whether you follow Profit First or not, if you work with me, I will absolutely insist that your business has at least two accounts, a business checking and a business savings. And that savings is specifically for tax savings. If you are running a profitable business, you will be taxed. Please, for the love of God, set aside money for taxes because nothing is worse than making a lot of money in your business and then getting a 12 or 15 or $20,000 tax bill and having already spent all of that money. It's so painful watching people have to pay off the taxes from the year prior while realizing they now also should be saving for the year to come. It's super challenging to put yourself in that situation. So save yourself the agony and just set aside money straight away for taxes. I recommend 15 to 30% of your total income. So when my money comes in, I immediately for my business take 25% and send it over to the tax savings account. I don't even look at it. I don't pretend like it's there. To me, it is a done deal. That money is set aside. And thankfully, thankfully, I have always had enough to cover my tax bill, which, you know, to be honest, you guys, I've been in business for two and a half years. My tax bill last year was $8,000, which is not a whole lot compared to some of the tax bills I've seen other clients get who have been in business for 10, 15 years. So thankfully I was able to cover it and I having watched this pain unfold for other people and I know I'm belaboring the point, but I just, I can't say it. I can't stress it enough, save for taxes. Okay. I don't want to kick a dead horse, so we're gonna let that go for now. But that is the absolute most important one. I would even say that that's like the number zero on my list because it's that foundational. Moving on though, because there are some other things to consider saving for that I think are also very exciting. Okay, the additional five sinking funds that I love to recommend for my clients to consider are number one, technology refresh. I know this is one that probably comes from my throwback days working in tech, but I love when people's businesses are growing and then they're able to upgrade their setup. So for example, in my business, I was able to go from a very small MacBook to a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is amazing because I can, even when I'm traveling with one monitor, do split screen and be very productive. 
I've also been able to upgrade monitors, my ring lights, some of my um, office furniture like lights, my external hard drive, things like this. Being able to have your business pay for those things is such a joy and recognizing that the lifespan of most laptops is three to five years and just recognizing that the advance in technology is going to um, tempt you to purchase new things within probably every three to five years, you just wanna go ahead and be prepared for that. Additionally, if you are in an industry like photography or videography, there are lenses, there are you know cameras. Um, I can't really think of another example off the cuff, but you know what your industry is, you know the technology required for it, and you know that some of those things, I mean, I've, I've worked with enough photographers now to know that some of those cameras are ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 with the right lens setups. So really consider setting aside money in a sinking fund to prepare for that future expense. And if you um, know exactly when you wanna get it, then be really explicit about like, this is how much money I need to set aside every month to purchase it by next summer or whatever your goal might be. Okay, the next item, number two sinking fund that I recommend is education and training. As your business grows, you will find that you might wanna participate in a mastermind. I serve coaches and consultants, and I'll be honest with you, that's probably one of the larger line items that I see. Some of the masterminds that I've got clients participating in are $25,000 or $50,000, and wowza, I want you to be able to do those things. I want you to go and have those networking experiences and I want you to gain those referral partners and I want you to have the mindset shifts that come from those experiences, but I also don't want you to go into debt to do it. So recognize what it is that you wanna participate in and set aside money ahead of time. It might take you a little bit longer to get there or it might inspire you to grow your business fast enough to be able to cover that bill. If masterminds aren't your thing, there's also conferences and certifications. Working with consultants, there are a lot of different certifications out there. Instructor-led trainings can be several thousand dollars and the tests themselves can be $500 plus. So have money set aside to cover those expenses. And like I mentioned earlier, conferences. Oh, maybe I didn't mention that, but conferences is a big one. It's a fabulous way to network and to also have that increased education for your industry. So if you aren't already thinking about conferences, you might want to. I found several for bookkeeping and for finances that I have really been looking into participating in in 2024. And this actually will be a nice segue into the next sinking fund. So the number three sinking fund that I am reminding my clients about with some regularity is travel. If you're wanting to attend a mastermind or a conference, the likelihood of it being right down the road is pretty slim. So when you plan to go to those conferences, you also wanna think about how many days will you be gone? How much will accommodations cost? What will airfare be? Or do I need to get a rental car? What will gas be if I'm going to use my own car? Just think through the same kind of budgeting techniques you would use for a family vacation and employ that in your business to cover the travel expenses, including things like meals. That's all stuff that can be paid for out of your business. I don't think all of the meal can be written off. That's something to talk about with your tax preparer for, but you can still pay for it all out of your business. And having the money set aside to do that, I think is really prudent. Number four, as your business is growing, so if you're doing all of these things, getting the better equipment and taking the training and traveling to build your network and your referral systems, you are growing your business. And the sad reality is that as your business grows, so does your insurance expense. The more valuable your business becomes, the increase your risk of litigation is. So make sure that you are paying for liability insurance and make sure that you're speaking with your insurance insurance broker with at least once a year, a once a year talking about, you know, how much money you expect to make, how many clients you're serving, the way that you're serving them. You want your insurance agent to quote you a policy that will better reflect the risk you're taking on with a growing business. My insurance has increased every year that I've been in business, which is two and a half years, which feels amazing to me. Um, but I'm seeing that trend already in just two and a half years. So I can only imagine people that have been in business much longer what their risk and insurance liability costs. 
So make sure you're setting aside money for insurance, just like you probably do it to pay your auto and your home insurance on a semi-annual or annual basis. Go ahead and set that up as an annual expense for your business and tuck away some money every month for that. And then lastly, and this is probably my favorite one to think about and to contemplate and to hold as part of a vision, is staffing. I have had the pleasure and the joy of working with some companies now for over a year who are at a point where they've already been subcontracting work or they're starting to subcontract work and they're really considering whether or not they should be hiring their first employee. This is really exciting because it just is such an indicator of the growth of their company and the prospect of them making more money down the road. That being said, it adds some stress because it's like, how can I be sure that I'll be able to cover these expenses going forward, especially payroll for an employee? One of the ways that I encourage my clients to be ready for that is to do the math to figure out what it would cost to hire that person and start setting aside that you know, paycheck amount into a sinking fund for payroll or for subcontractors. By setting that money aside, you're essentially saying, hey, I'm getting comfortable budgeting for this dollar amount, but on top of that, you can build up two or hopefully three months worth of operations expense for paying that person. And then once they come on, hopefully your new monthly revenues will cover their paycheck. But if not, you've got two or three months buffer cushion in that account already. So creating that separate account specifically for payroll, which you guys know if you're following Profit First, you already have an owner's pay account. This would be like now establishing also a subcontractor's account or an employee payroll account that's designated specifically for that purpose. And when you do that and it, get, it gets sufficiently padded, then you have increased confidence that you are ready to take that leap. All right, guys, those are the ones that I came up with, but tell me, what are the sinking funds that you have created for your business? Did the idea of using sinking funds in your business ever cross your mind? Please feel free to leave comments below and like and share this video if it's something you feel would be helpful to someone else. I appreciate you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful season and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.